When wandering into nature, we all know typical vescular plants as trees, flowers and other herbs. But what is a green carpet below which covers forests, tree barks, stones and even pavement patches and walls in our cities? What are these ancient wonders which conquered terrestrial habitats long before the dinosaurs appeared? What is this small green world which is immune to almost every infection? This form of plants is called bryophytes. What else makes them so special? Join us to a discovery to world of bryophytes. Bryophytes can be differentiated into three main groups, which are hornwoods, liverworts, and mosses. Bryophytes are land plants without a vascular system and dependent on external water supply, since they cannot regulate the water content themselves. Also, their reproduction is fully dependent on water. It is assumed that bryophytes are the first land plants. Today's studies show that they first appeared on terrestrial habitats 510 to 600 million years ago. Many colonization events of terrestrial habitats happened in this time. Land plants evolved from aquatic green algae. Bryophytes do not have roots but small hair-like structures called rhizoids, which can be more or single-celled. They anchor the plant in the substrate. In bryophytes, the gametophyte dominates the life cycle. We talk about the haploid cell phase. A complex reproduction cycle is found in bryophytes. A special feature of bryophytes is that they can dry out completely and are able to rebuild their metabolism again when they are re-wetted. Most vascular plants do not have this ability. Because of this feature, bryophytes could spread in many different habitats and climate zones around Earth. These plants are able to disperse their spores over extreme long distances. Bryophytes are pioneers, they inhabit raw substrates and help to form fertile soil. In regulating photosynthetic activity, water is an important parameter in plants which are poikilohydric, as bryophytes. This means that they cannot regulate the water content by themselves and are dependent on the environment. Different bryophyte species react differently to variations in water availability and have different limits. Bryology is a science of mosses and liverworts. Modern bryology started around 1800 when the first working microscopes were available. Today, traditional bryology mainly became less important, but there are differences between different countries. The publishing of lists of endangered species, called red lists, is an important task. Because many species of mosses have become rare due to human impact. Mosses can store a huge amount of water, so they play an important role in the global water balance. C. 
CO2 reduction is an important function of mosses. Bogs are immense sinks of CO2. They are mainly formed by mosses of the genus Swagnum. Bogs are habitats for many rare animals and plants. Another important purpose of mosses is the colonization of sparse soils. They can form soils and offer a good condition for higher plants. Some mosses are sensitive on changes of the environment. This means that they can be used as bioindicators. One square meter of mosses inhabits up to 60,000 small animals, a city in miniature format. But they also offer materials for birds to build their nests. Humans used mosses to isolate their houses, build mattresses and used peat to heat. Furthermore, Bryophytes were used for medicinal purpose in different countries. Some species are used to produce antibiotics or used antimicrobial. Many habitats are fragmented or lost today. Rainforests are deforested, bogs are declining and many natural environments are transformed for agricultural purposes. However, agricultural habitats can be important for mosses, but just if they are used sustainable and not too intensive. Intensive agriculture is combined with using a high number of pesticides and fertilizers. Another limiting factor for mosses in liverworts is the declining of natural rivers. For example, many rivers are interrupted by hydroelectric power plants. Primary forests with ancient trees and dead wood are missing today. They often inhabit a lot of bryophyte species. The protection of ecological valuable habitats is very important to protect rare bryophytes. We can protect ancient trees and primary forests. On a global scale, we can fight against rainforest deforestation. We can promote sustainable and local agriculture. Farmers can reduce fertilizers and pesticides or use them more precise. Rivers can be re-naturalized. The protection of bogs is from high importance because they inhabit many endangered plants and animals and as well act as a carbon sink. Old trees and natural walls in urban places can be useful as a habitat. There are two main types of mosses. First, Acrocarpus mosses. This means the sporophyte grows on the end of the stem. The other type is called Pleurocarpus moss, with the sporophyte growing on the side of the stem. A very common genus of Acrocarpus mosses is Polytrichum or Haircup mosses. These mosses are easy to recognize. They have wiry foliage all along the stems. When viewed from above, each stem looks like a star with lots of points. These mosses can grow in almost any habitat. On the other hand, a common Pleurocarpus moss is Hylocomnium splendens, also called the glittering wood moss. This moss shimmers in the light and turns brown in the fall. 
Its feathery stems and leaves can grow to be up to 20 cm long. It often grows together with Rutia didelphus triquetrus, or big shaggy moss. It is also Pleurocarpus. The name is very appropriate due to the messy, unkempt look of this moss. The common pocket moss, Physidens taxifolios, is a moss which is easy recognizable in the field. A very important family of bryophytes are peat mosses or Sphagnaceae. They often grow in bogs or in moist forests. They can save up to 25 times of water compared to their dry weight. Another important role is that they form peat. Peat is used for building, heating, medical purposes and a substrate to cultivate plants. In addition, peat is a source material to synthesize activated carbon. Many peat mosses have become rare and so they are protected. Liverworts are land plants without a vascular system and show some differences to other bryophytes but some characteristics they have in common. They can grow in the form of a talus or can be leafy, folios. The structure of a talus is mostly flared or branched, without division in any plant organs. This means it does not form leaves, stems or roots. For a better understanding, we use words like leaves, stems and roots. But in mosses and liverworts, these organs are called leaf-like structure, stem-like structure and rhizoids. But what makes liverworts so special? First of all, we cannot find a midrib on their leaves. They can have many leaf tips. Leaves can be lobed or notched. We must use a good magnification glass to find these structures because almost all liverworts are really tiny. To observe other characters, we must use a microscope. Here we can find oil bodies and cells and the rhizoids are formed from one single cell. Like other bryophytes, gametophytes dominate in liverworts. The gametophyte is a cellular phase in which the chromosomes exist in single form. Diploids, like humans, have two chromosome sets. The haploid phase in humans is found in their sperms and egg cells. The sporophyte depends on the gametophyte. The sporophyte is a diploid phase in bryophytes. Liverworts produce spores to reproduce sexually. The spores of liverworts have elaters. Elators are structures which help the spore to disperse. They react on changes in humidity. But we can also find asexual reproduction in some species. One of these species is Machantia polymorpha, called common liverwood. It is used as a model organism and it has splashing cups. They are able to distribute gemmae up to more than one meter. Gemme are single cells which can form complete organisms. Liverworts prefer moist habitats, so we can find many of them beside creeks. Some of them grow on trees or rocks. We find a huge diversity of them in tropical rainforests. The ecological importance of liverworts is the reduction of erosion by stabilizing soils and forming soil crusts, the retention and collection of water. The Japanese species Radula peroteti, for example, contains a chemical compound perotetin, a cannabinoid which could be used against some diseases in future. Antimycotic Antibacterial, 
and antiviral features of liverworts could be used in plant cultivation and for medical purposes. But there is still more investigation needed. Today we know around 5000 species so they can offer a high level of usable ingredients. The snakeskin liverwort Conocephalum conicum. It is a large tallow's liverwort growing beside creeks. It prefers moist places. The surface appears snakeskin like. We can find a field pattern with quite big air pores. The archegonial heads resemble mushrooms which look like black conical heads. An archegonium is a structure of the gametophyte which produces the female gamete. Frulania species This foliose liverwort mostly grows on the bark of living and dead trees. They are often reddish, purplish or brownish. They form a branching pattern. A special trait of them are tiny, helmet-shaped appendages on leaves which are able to store water during dry situations. Plagiochila asplenoides is one of the biggest leafy liverworts in Central Europe and up to 12 cm long. It usually grows in moist and silicious forest habitats. Some species of liverworts trap little animals inside sacks, so this can be described as carnivorous habit. Carnivorous plants get most of the nutrients from trapping and digesting animals. One of these species is Colora sophaga. A third division of bryophytes is called hornwoods. In Europe they are short-living plants. In the tropics they are often perennial. Hornwoods are very hard to find and to observe. Our life would be completely different without these ancient wonders. Their ecological function is highly important. They offer our soils and reduce erosion. They gift us multifunctional material as peat. They help us fighting against climate change. These biodiverse species form habitats for a huge number of different species, dependent on them. The protection of these ancient heroes lies in our hands. <laughs>